When I was young, my brother and I built a boat with our father. We spent several years sailing and exploring the Patuxent River. And then I met Tony. Peter and I spent many happy times on that boat. And so when we got married, we built a larger boat and ventured out into the Chesapeake Bay and its many rivers. We crewed on larger boats with dreams of sailing the world, but then life took another turn. Today, we look forward to retirement with dreams of leaving it all behind. Come join us on our journey to sail the seas. We are in the parking lot of the U.S. Naval Academy, uh, waiting for our shuttle bus to take us to the spring sailboat show down in Annapolis Harbor. It is cold, it is rainy, and it's a little bit windy, so this is going to be a rough day. There's a fine line between dedication and stupidity, and today I'm asking which side of the line are we on? We only want to see two boats, the elusive 1190 Sport, and they have a Lagoon 42 that's right next to it, I think, so we're going to check that out, and then hit the tents. Right? Right. Me, on the other hand, I have my raincoat. We'll be Boat show to ourselves. <laughs> All warmed up by scotch. <laughs> There she is, the 1190, the elusive 1190 Sport. It's so miserable out here, it's wet, it's cold, it's raining. <clears throat> the C-Win 1190 is based off the C-Win 1160 hulls. They added an extra foot to the stern to accommodate the drop-down rudders. This 1190 sported a lot of sexy carbon fiber. It almost feels like the 1190 wanted to break her dock lines and take off, roam the bay as fast and free as she can. The 1190 has dagger boards, which gives it great windward performance, and when raised, only has a draft about 1 foot 11 inches, versus the 1160, which has a draft of 3 feet 6 inches. The 1190 Sport has a taller mass, giving it the ability to carry more sail area. With a displacement of only six tons, the additional sail area, and those dagger boards, she is truly a performance catamaran. The 1190 and the 1160 share the same cockpit. Now, originally, I thought that this was flexi teeth, but I think it was really EVA foam. It was very comfortable on the feet. The 1190 has the same apt seating arrangements and the grill, just like the 1160. The blue line outboard allowed you to raise and lower the dagger boards from the helm position. Walking down either hull, you'll notice the big difference, and that's the dagger board case. With dagger boards come dagger board cases. Other than the modifications around those dagger board cases, the rest of the layup is the same as the C1160. This is the starboard aft stateroom. That dagger board case is where the galley stove would normally be, with an opening cannon port type window over it. But because of the dagger board case, the stove was shifted aft. This also eliminated the cupboard. I knew what we knew what we wanted. It was a long journey to get here. But I think we still got the best boat. The 1260 is the best for us. Yeah, we used to own a 1260. I really like them. They're very comfortable. They're the one that 
Richard Ward built for himself. I, I think the biggest thing is the dagger board case. You, you give up some storage with the dagger board. Where'd you put your shoes? They're up there. That's definitely closes things off. But it is padded. No one. <laughs> Yeah. Not much difference on the this like this is the biggest they, thing. I like the way they made space here. Right. But you give up the galley window. You give up the, the yeah. opening yeah. window yeah, over the stove. That whole, um, that whole um, cabinet the, that holds all the dishes and stuff. And, and the cupboard. That's this is where the cupboard would normally be. You don't have the little window here that you can Right, because the chain over. plate. That's the chain plates there. And these should be higher. Like yeah. a lot bigger. Because yeah. that brings I dropped those badge holders off of you. Thank you. I didn't even, but I knew some of the boys did. I like this. I know you like it better up top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tony liked the chart table on the 1160 and the 1190. I kind of prefer the one on the 1260. I'd rather have it up, even though it's smaller. There is cubby storage between the dagger board and the outer hall. It's quite deep. It's about an arm length depth to it. See? Other than the dagger boards, it's, it's very, very similar. You it's know? very similar. It's like the 1160. It doesn't have the storage behind here. No. The bunk. This might be longer than the 1260. Well, we have the pads here on the side with the 1260. Here, let me I get think by. that might be an option. I love the carbon fiber throughout. The carbon fiber on the tabletop, the nav desk, the bow spread, and the targa. I am warming up. It's very rainy. 
lots of weather, bad hair day. <laughs> And it's, we are in the VIP experience. Um, I don't know what this building is, but it's very nice. And they have, um, they serve breakfast in the morning and then some lunch and around noon. And it's very nice. Um, you can warm up. Latitude 38, I believe is what this is called. Let's take a look outside. Uh, It's cold, it's wet, and it's freaking miserable out there. We're going to hang out. We're going to hang out here and warm up a little bit, grab a bite to eat, and then go back and hit the tents. And I think that will be it, right? That will probably be it today. Mm -hmm. It's a smaller show than the fall. This is the Lagoon 42. I always like comparing similar sized boats. This boat is one foot bigger than the C-1260. Tony and I spent some time on a Lagoon 40 foot. We felt it was very cramped, especially down in the halls. We were curious to see the difference that two feet will make. Two feet can make a significant difference in the boat. In this boat, you can see that we have a separate shower. On the Lagoon 40, it was very cramped and it was a wet head. I do not really like the 70s color style paneling, maybe because I survived the 70s. The two feet extra in this boat did widen it up a little bit, made it a little bit more airy. It felt a lot less cramped than that Lagoon 40. The lagoons are built specifically for the charter trade. They're nice boats when you're chartering. The accommodations are down below and the living space is up top. I really don't like that stripper pole in the middle of the saloon. The accommodations in the port hall mirror those of the starboard hall. There was no difference between the two. A lot of people notice a nice wide bunk in the stern. I notice a wide stern that you have to drag through the water. It's all about trade-offs, comfort versus performance. Because of the horrible weather, a lot of the boats had their cushions stored inside. The forward heads were wet heads. That glass window is an escape hatch in case the catamaran ever capsized. I like the cockpit table. You didn't have to climb around or over a lot of people to get in and out of it. It looks like they eliminated those spiral stairs going up to the helm. You still have steps going up, but eliminating the spiral is an improvement. I still don't like climbing stairs to go to the helm. The controls layout is a big improvement than it was on the 400 S2. Another step ladder going up and top. This is where people would go out and lay out in the sun. Two feet makes all the difference in the world. If me and Tony would to charter a boat in the Caribbean, you can't go wrong with this boat. But for me and Tony to sail by ourselves, uh, this is still not the boat for us.
way. This is to see when light goes slow. Me and Tony actually took this boat out for a day for a sail. She's a zippy boat. This is beautiful boat. You having fun? I've been to better boat shows, or at least better weather boat shows. Yeah. Perfect day for sampling scotch. <laughs> so it's a bad hair day from the rain. But fortunately, we paid extra for the VIP experience and they had a scotch tasting. But you can get breakfast and lunch and they have snacks and you can come and go and they usually have an open bar too. Sherry, then we also aged it in American oak as well. American oak? Yeah, and European oak. So this has a double oak in there. Yeah. This time it was rainy, but even when it's sunny, the VIP experience gets you out of the sun, gets you out of the weather, and you get a chance to sit down and have something cold to drink, and they provide food. I like the first one. I'll try it. Honey in there. I like the first one better. Yeah. I agree. Next one is my attic. And what? Yeah, is this is a 15-year. Peter's has me spoiled, but I really don't want to go back without the VIP experience. Not because of the alcohol, but because it gets us out of the weather and gives us a chance to sit down. I think that one's my favorite. It's uh, so, so cool. Oh, my husband's going to be so jealous. Sherry? <laughs> this one's pretty good. This one's better than the second one, for sure. Yeah. This one has a nice fit. It has a little bit of ginger in it, and it's very light. It's it is very light. Sherry. It is, actually. You're right. That's awesome. This guy's just Sherry Barrel. Yes, Sherry Barrel. Thank you. And that's what gives it a little more of the sweetness. This is less sweet because... That's not bad. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, that was <laughs> delicious. Oh, yeah. Because I know your face. Tell me, savoring. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, that's different. Yeah. Well, the the Scotch sampling warmed us up, and then we went back out to the vendors in the tents. You want a different cup? Yeah, that'd be great. I don't want you to rush it. I want to try it again. Oh, versus. Oh, good call. Yeah. Good call. We want to try it again and again and, and again and again. And again. <laughs> The first, the third, the worst is the second, and then the fourth. So it'd be one, three, four, two. Now we need to take a, a picture of all these that we tried. I like maybe three, one, and four. And this is with Sherry. Maybe it was one. I haven't tried it yet. I'm waiting for him. Yep. It's wrong. Like I feel like I 
start fire. That's a spice. It has a very, it's almost syrupy, but lightly. Yeah, exactly. It's wrong, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the wrong. Yeah, they're on the wrong. Yeah, so there's. Oh, no, we're we talking about two different ones. Different. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's not that bad. It's silky. 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 And then this one. That? Oh, is this that one the rum? This rum. One. Yep. And then the rum. And this is the 15. Yep. Still saving. And then the rum. This is my note taking. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> you can watch it back. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone you want to try again? The first one. I am sopping wet. My my jeans are like I, I jumped in a pool or something. I'm cold, I'm wet, I'm miserable. Will I do this again? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> the spring sailboat show is uh, a lot smaller. And, and the reason we came up here was to see the 1190 Sport, the elusive Which we got to see. So that was good, but the, the tents and the exhibits for were very small there weren't wasn't many and there wasn't many marine stuff you know you had a lot of makeup and art and embroidery and there and was no makeup there was skin care at a boat show yeah, <laughs> mas massage stuff you know I, uh, um so yeah i'm, I'm gonna stick with the october boat show from this the fall boat yeah. show from this point on what do you think me too me too it was wet we had our raincoats we did get on the 1190 Peter got on the lagoon, and um, we, did spend we, a lot of we time. spent a lot of time in the VIP tent, enjoying the <laughs> beverages, <laughs> and just staying out of the rain and staying, trying yeah. to stay dry. But anyway, we did get some chart books, so I'm happy about that. And you got jewelry. And I got a, a, a pretty necklace. Me who said we couldn't have skincare there, but I was happy to see the jewelry. <laughs> And we we can't get through this light. This is like the fifth iteration. Lots of traffic. <sighs> <laughs> it wasn't bad. We, it was an enjoyable day. Until the very end, we stayed pretty dry. Yeah, the wind picked up. They closed all the boats. They closed all the boats at uh, four. I mean, the, the waves and everything. People couldn't get on and off of off of them uh, because of the waves. And uh, so it was just a bad day. Not only for us, but for the vendors and, and this bacteria. But there was no crowds. <laughs> there was absolutely no line for anything except for the line to go home. And and who was the first to get into the boat? We show? were the first ones in the boat show. <laughs> first people. People try to cut in front of them. I suck sick sick Tony on them. Oh, he did not. We pushed them uh, no, down. No, he did not. We kicked them. No, 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 no. Some of them we just threw overboard. There simply and, was no line. And we were the first ones there. <laughs> and Peter's so impatient. We got up very early for this event. <clears throat> to fight the crowds. To fight the crowds, which there were not. Oh, no. I saw, <laughs> I saw four or five people running under a tent. <laughs> <laughs> it was freaking miserable. It is freaking miserable. Until the next episode, I guess. If you like what we're doing, what should they do? So subscribe, <laughs> click like, and what's the other thing? Under the notification bell. Oh. So they can know whenever we put out an episode. Oh, yes. Do that, too. Bye. Hey. Bye. Today's May 1st. We stepped on the scales, and I weighed in at 184 pounds. That was my goal, was 185, but I did drop six pounds in April for a total of 36 pounds since January 1st. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I've lost 27 since January 1st. I'm not telling you how much I weigh. That's, that's okay, <laughs> as long as we keep dropping. I'm gonna to continue to do what I've been doing good. and uh, see where we are at June 1st. Yes. And we'll record another update.
Thank you.